on this picture, the capillaries broke here on this sort of area on my cheek and also just above my eyebrows on both sides. Since you guys liked our series exposing makeup brands so much, I thought the next step for exposing could be skincare brands because I'm someone that struggled with acne literally for as long as I can remember. And recently when I finally started to give my skincare the attention that it deserved is when I finally saw a noticeable improvement in my skin. So I wanted to come on here and tell you guys some skincare brands that you should maybe be thinking twice about. Hey, what's up, Iowers? It's Mackenzie here, and today on the channel, I'm gonna be breaking down the top 10 skincare brands that are extremely problematic. But before I get into it, make sure to subscribe down below and click the bell icon to never miss one of our juicy uploads. Also, just a little disclaimer that this video is sharing the opinions of myself and a lot of others online. And if you disagree and love these products, then that's amazing, and we would all love to hear why below. So starting off at number 10, we have Mario Badescu. So Mario Badescu is actually a huge reason that I wanted to make this video, as I would see celebrities and influencers promote it, but it never really worked for me, and sometimes it would even break me out when I tried their products. Beauty writer Jackie Denecki did her part to lift the veil on the brand saying that by far she gets the most emails from people terrified of how their skin has reacted to Mario Badescu products. Saying, quote, the number of panicked messages I get from readers reporting dry, itchy, red, irritated, and broken skin after using Mario Badescu is significantly enough to constitute a trend. And if you still don't believe me, the brand actually faced a massive lawsuit a few years back when it was discovered that the brand used strong and harmful steroids in their products and didn't disclose them either. And these steroids are so terrible that they can allegedly cause irreparable damage to the skin, such as skin so thin that it easily perforates, leading to infection, diseases, fungal growths, rashes, and blistered skin, she says in the article. So please, if you're looking to use Mario Badescu, I just urge you to look further into these claims. Up at number nine, St. Ives. So I'm assuming most of you have at least heard of St. Ives Apricot Scrub if you haven't tried it yourself. I actually remember back in middle school, I used their scrub religiously because I thought it would cure my acne, but it didn't. And actually a lot has come out about the scrub that are making a lot of people second guess it. Back in 2017, St. Ives faced a huge lawsuit when tons of customers band together and claimed that the crushed walnut powder creates microscopic tears in their skin exposing it to infections and irritation, and that the label's claim of being non-comedogenic was not correct either. And a Glamour article spoke on how users on Reddit's skincare addiction subreddit agreed with a lot of these claims, with a majority of these users saying that the product caused them a lot of inflammation and terrible breakouts, with a lot of dermatologists agreeing, saying that the product is extremely rough, far more intense than most face scrubs should be. So the lawsuit did end up being thrown out because the judge didn't believe that the plaintiffs proved their point, but based on how much talk this caused in the skincare community, I urge you guys to look into the scrub a little bit more before you choose to buy it. Up at number eight, Clean and Clear. So this one's mostly based off of a video that Hiram did, and if you don't know, he's a skincare guru on YouTube, and he makes a lot of videos like this. So in one video, he talked about Clean and Clear, and at the end of the video, he says that he could not in good faith recommend the brand, because they just have too many problematic ingredients for the skin. In the video, one of the product lines he speaks against is their new lemon line, and he says that he's disappointed in this because lemon is an incredibly irritating ingredient that he doesn't think people should be using on their skin. Then he said another huge issue he had with the brand is that all of their products include an insane amount of fragrance, which is very unnecessary and extremely irritating to the skin. And lastly, he says a lot of the acne cleansers in their line are very harsh and stripping, and they seem to use very low quality ingredients in a lot of their formulas. So up at number seven, Proactive. So I'm sure you all know of Proactive. The infomercials and celebrity endorsements make them seem pretty appealing. But more often than not, people express that it only temporarily fixed their acne and then gave them terrible side effects in the process. Some clinical trials have also shown that allegedly about 50% of people have some type of adverse reaction to Proactive, experiencing things like dryness, skin infections, and even infestations. Some people also speak of burning when putting the products on their skin. One doctor called Dr. Chung said that in his experience, quote, the most common complaints that I have heard are dry and flaky skin. There are also some people online who have claimed the products were so powerful that they actually bleached their skin. And it took months or even years to recover from that. And at number six, Clinique. 
So Clinique is a brand my mother actually always advised me against using because a lot of their skincare contains alcohol. And it seems like she's not the only one with an issue, as Estee Lauder, who is the parent company of Clinique, got caught up in a lawsuit when the plaintiff argued that Estee Lauder uses deceptive advertising tactics to lure thousands of customers into believing it's Clinique repair wear, youth surge, and turnaround collection have the ability to make wrinkles disappear and gives other anti-aging benefits. And the plaintiff continued that a lot of the ways the product is sold contributes to its deception, like only selling it at over-the-counter department stores so you can't read the ingredients before buying, using photoshopped photos for the after pictures, and saying that some ingredients are not FDA approved. However, this lawsuit was also thrown out. But Hiram also did make a video about this one, where he says that their toners are some of the most stripping out there, as alcohol is the second ingredient in one of them. So I guess my mom was right about something. Halfway through at number five, Drunk Elephant. So this one's not as much about the actual products in this brand, but how the brand interacts with its customers. So Skincare by Hiram made a very controversial video when he decided to speak out against the brand in a video that he did, where he talks about his issues with the brand. His first problem is how the brand treats influencers and how they will cut ties with influencers immediately after any semblance of a bad review is posted. Then he talks a little bit about their negative treatment of customers, especially on social media. And lastly, he did not like the superiority they took in the beauty community, making it seem like they're the end all and be all of quality skincare. So I'm sure a lot of you out there know and love Drunk Elephant's products, but even Hiram himself said he loves the products but cannot support them anymore because they're customer service issues. Up at number four, Lancome. So Lancome is a high-end skincare brand, but people have a lot of issues with their products. With many online saying that even though the products are packaged beautifully, the products contain very minimal beneficial ingredients. With one person on Reddit writing, quote, where are the antioxidants? All the beneficial skin repairing stuff. Where are the potent active ingredients? Where's the proper airless packaging that protects the ingredient from sunlight? And then with people continuing that the products are incredibly bland and do almost nothing for the skin. With the common theme being that the products are not worth the high costs that they charge. And at number three, Neutrogena. So this one is another point that's gonna be almost entirely based off of a review that Hiram did around the brand. His conclusion was that he was not impressed by the brand and he didn't like how they seemed to be marketed as a brand dermatologist would recommend. When based off the stripping and irritating ingredients in their lines, dermatologists should not be recommending it. And he did not like how they used fragrance in almost every single product. And their use of sunscreen factors in their products can be pretty gimmicky, with some of the products claiming insane amounts of sun protection, when the highest protected factor you can actually get in a product is only SPF 50. Lastly, he spoke about their natural product lines and how he believes the products are a scam, as the ingredients do not include anything more beneficial to the skin than their regular products. And they get to hike the price up. Oh, but number two, Glossier. So Glossier has really made a huge impact on the beauty community, becoming one of the most prominent brands for those that want a really natural look. But because the brand seems to be targeted at people with almost perfect skin, the brand has gotten some flack for being a brand for people that a Mashable article said, quote, wash their face with water and have picture perfect skin. Self-editor Anna Borges even said, quote, step one for using any Glossier product is already having perfect skin, right? So it's a theory that is even reaching the heads of the beauty landscape. Users on Reddit have some other gripes with the products, saying that it's overpriced, uses too much fragrance, and they are not upfront about the percentages of active ingredients in any of their products. Which makes some people complain that the products don't do anything, and others talk about how they get chemical burns. And prominent skincare user Susan Yar even said, quote, if you have real skin issues, this is not the brand for you. But if you have nice skin and you're just maintaining that skin, then you might find Glossier products you really like. So no huge issues here, just some things that I wanted to highlight for you guys. And now taking the number one spot, Clarisonic. So the Clarisonic oscillating brushes that became huge in skincare a few years back have a lot of questions surrounding it as some people swear by it, but many others have had incredibly harmful results from using the brush. And to be straight up with you guys, my mom bought this one for me and I had a terrible breakout when I used it. And there's a common idea that your skin needs to purge first and then get better later. But me and a lot of other people didn't really have that experience. The main complaints with the system is that since it is recommended to be used once or twice daily, it can be incredibly irritating as you are exfoliating your skin much more often than recommended. 
There are also plenty of reviews online of people claiming that the product has ruined their skin permanently. And even after they stopped using it, they still suffer from extreme dehydration and irritation. A beauty guru named Wayne Gross even did a whole video on it, where he explained that after he used the Clarisonic for six weeks, he started to have extreme breakouts. Even though he had perfect skin before, and he had broken capillaries in his cheeks and extremely sore, sensitive skin. So definitely approach this one with caution if you have sensitive skin. Okay guys, so that's all for the list. I hope you enjoyed and learned something from this video. And if you've had any negative or positive results with any of these brands I mentioned, I would love to hear about them below in the comments. Before I go, as usual, I'm gonna shout out some comments from my celebrities and open marriages part two video. So Kai DeRouter said, never would I share my man. I'm so dramatic, I can't handle not being the center of attention. Honestly, same, like I need too much attention to let my boyfriend give it to someone else. So that would not work for me at all. Then Madeline May said, I could never do an open relationship. I'm exhausted with just one partner. Oh my God, when I first read that one, I just, I died laughing. Like I literally laughed out loud. It was hilarious, thank you for sharing. Then Miss Megan said, question for the married couples in the comments. How do y'all keep things spicy and not get annoyed with each other? <laughs> asking for a friend. Oh yeah, of course you're asking for a friend. Psh, not asking for yourself. <laughs> I cannot give you any advice on this one, but I just had to say this is one of the funniest comment sections that I have ever read with you guys just shit talking your boyfriends and husbands. Love to see it, it was hilarious. Thanks for sharing everyone. <laughs> okay guys, so that's all from me. Please subscribe below if you liked. And of course, like the video if you wanna see more like this. Also follow the IO team on our socials to be kept up to date with our lives. Thanks again for watching everyone and I'll see you in the next one.